Okay. So, uh, for this course, this is the last topic and the title of this is power system uh, stability. Uh, so, uh, whatever and here we will mainly we will see the transient stability for single machine infinite bus, uh, infinite bus system, but before that we will see something uh, more regarding some description of your steady state stability, uh, dynamic or small signal stability and some kind of mathematical derivation and understanding. Uh, and power system stability actually that implies that its ability to maintain a to return to normal or stable operation after having been subject to some form of disturbance. That means, you give some you give some disturbance and if it come back to it is uh, after after you know some kind of your what you call it will deviate from its steady state or what you call uh, from its uh, original steady state point, but after some time if it returns very to the stable point or very close to that that means, we call that system is stable right. So, actually in a power system you will find that there is always a disturbance because some loads are switch on, switching on, some loads are switched off, but systems are uh, always stable. I mean this kind of disturbance is very small uh, or what you call for, for uh, this is uh, no, I will not say small disturbances, but this kind of disturbance always is on in power system, but our system remains stable. So, that is why that uh, power and uh, your power system stability that is why implies that is ability to return to normal or, sta or stable operation after having been subjected to some form of disturbance. So, what kind of disturbance that we will see later, but in power system the disturbance is always on I mean, like because some lights are switched on, fans are switched off something like that and some loads are switched on switched off it is a continuous process. So, an instability means a condition denoting loss of synchronism of synchronous machine or falling out of step that is instability. Actually stability itself is a huge uh, course or huge, uh, huge thing, but we will restrict to for as far as uh, this course is concerned at uh, your at undergraduate level. So, therefore, the state of equilibrium or stability of a power system commonly alludes to maintaining synchronous, oper synchronous operation of the system. Right. So, that means, you have to you have to maintain the stability of power system. Uh, so, we will focus on this aspect of stability that whereby a loss of synchronism will mean to render the system unstable. So, synchronous machine will not never lose synchronism and will all not fall out of step and system will remain stable. So, when we define stability of the power system there are only three types of stability actually are generally are of concern. One is steady state one, uh, another one dynamic or called small signal stability and last one is the transient stability. So, of course, uh, many other stabilities are there in power system uh, that is beyond the scope for example, voltage stability. So, steady state stability relates to the response of a synchronous machine of a gradually increasing load that you in I mean you increase the load uh, gradually and you can find out that uh, deta up determines the upper limit of the machine before it losing synchronism. That means, stability that steady state stability relates to the response of a synchronous machine to a gradually increasing load. It is basically concerned with the determination of the upper limit of the machine loadings before losing synchronism. Uh, provided the loading is increased gradually. So, you gradually your loading is getting increased, but at up to it will sustain up to a maximum limit after that it may fall out of your uh, step that is it, it may lose synchronism right. So, and dynamic or small signal stability actually it involves the response to small disturbances that occur in the system producing oscillations that means, because of small disturbance, uh, disturbance there will be continuous oscillation. So, the system is said to be dynamically stable if this oscillation do not acquire more than certain amplitude and die out quickly, but if their oscillation continuously grow in amplitude the system is uh, dynamically unstable. Actually, the small signal stability it involves huge analysis we will not study this one it is huge it, it, it involves huge uh, analysis for synchronous machine 
and to damp out this os uh, your what you call this oscillation uh, if there is a small disturbance say some step increase in mechanical torque uh, some form and there will be continuous oscillation and to damp out those oscillations but in the your in that omega that is in that case uh, uh, commonly use uh, thing is that power system stabilizer so lead lag stabilizer so those things we will not study for small signal and stability analysis but uh, 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 but he, he, for this case you need that your what you call that detail analysis of synchronous machine particular dynamics and another one is the transient stability it involves the response to large disturbances that you know which may cause rather large changes in rotor speed power angles and power transfer but transient stability is a fast phenomena and usually evident within a few seconds so but among uh, uh, among this the transient stability of course is uh, very severe because it is due to a last, uh, large disturbance means sup, sup, suppose there is a fault three phase fault or line to ground fault in that case your what you call it rather uh, your what you call it will be large change in the rotor speed power angles and power transfer for example a double circuit line there is a fault in one line so naturally power transfer capability will change and those kind of your what you call that large disturbances it cause transient your that that phenomena is called transient stability so in that case your what you call uh, it is basically within a few second so that means if such fault is occurred you have to see the fault is cleared in very quickly it may be four cycles or six cycles the fault has to be cleared so these are the three different type of faults one is I told you that uh, steady st uh, sorry not fault steady state stability then uh, three types of stability then uh, small signal or dynamic stability and then transient stability but our object our uh, concern for this course will be uh, transient stability and generally single machine in finite bus system. So, inertia constant and the swing equation the swing equation that is that uh, they, uh, they describe the dynamics of the rotor of synchronous machine. So, inertia constant and the swing equation. So, inertia constant and the angular momentum it is play an important role in determining the transient stability of a synchronous machine. So, the power unit inertia constant H actually it is we are calling power unit inertia constant H, but later we will see it is uh, its dimension is mega joule MVA per MVA or it is can be uh, given a unit in second also is defined as the kinetic energy stored in the rotating parts of the machine at synchronous speed per MVA rating of the machine that is we define the inertia constant. So, now the rotor kinetic energy at synchronous speed is given as that kinetic energy K e we define half j omega s it is mechanical uh, speed right synchronous speed mechanical omega s square into 10 to the power minus 6 mega joule. So, j is moment of inertia actually in kg meter square and omega s square is mechanical speed, but uh, your I will come to that and where j is equal to moment of inertia of rotor kg meter square omega s mechanical is synchronous speed in mechanical radian per second and you know the relationship that you know we know the relationship that is your theta electrical is equal theta electrical is equal to p by 2 theta mechanical this we know. So, same same philosophy that omega s electrical is equal to p by 2 omega s mechanical that is rotor speed in electrical radian per second, but if p is equal to 2 the 2 pole machine then omega s electrical is equal to omega s mechanical when p is equal to number of poles of machine. Now, from equation 1 and 2 that means this equation if you if you replace omega s mechanical by omega s electrical then it will become kinetic energy will half j into 2 by p square whole square into omega s electrical into 10 to the power minus 6 that is into your omega this omega s electrical that means kinetic energy also you can write that half m into omega s electrical that means this portion we are defining as m this is say equation 3 where 
where m is equal to j into 2 by p whole square omega s electrical into the power minus 6. That is moment of inertia in mega joule second per electrical radian. This is that unit of this or what you call the same is moment of inertia in mega joule second per electrical radian. This is equation 4. Now, we shall define the inertia constant h such that you define inertia constant h such that g into h is equal to kinetic energy is equal to half m omega s electrical radian electrical that is not radian omega s electrical say this is mega joule. So, we are defining g h is equal to actually kinetic energy half m omega s electrical this is in terms of mega joule wherever possible I have written the uh, unit there will be no confusion then where g is equal to 3 phase mv rating that is the of machine it is a base value and h is equal to inertia constant in mega joule or m v a or megawatt second uh, or second. Actually, if it is if it is um, your mega joule per m v a say you know that uh, your what you call joule per second is equal to what? That means, joule is equal to I am writing in simply short form joule is equal to your watt second that means, mega joule is equal to mega watt second. That means, this one can be written as mega watt second slash m v a. So, m v a mega watt by m v a is a dimensionless quantity that means, h can be defined that is in second also right. So, if you read uh, some book you will find inertia constant h is given as a second actually it is mega watt second per m v a. So, it is actually m v a mega watt m v a is dimensionless. So, it is in given in second. So, so your that is why h inertia constant in mega joule per m v a I told you it is or it is mega watt second per m v a or it is second. Next is that from equation 5 from this one. So, you can write you can write that m is equal to 2 g h upon omega s electrical is equal to you can write 2 g h upon 2 pi f omega s is actually omega is equal to 2 pi f. So, writing omega s electrical is equal to 2 pi f. Now, m is equal to uh, whatever I showed you here I have uh, made it made it here also that mega joule is equal to mega watt second we will come to that later on. So, m is equal to g h upon pi f 2 2 will be cancelled it is mega joule second uh, per electrical radian that is your m. Now, or if you want in degree then instead of radian pi you can put at 180 uh, right. So, m is equal to g h upon 180 f that is mega joule second per electrical degree it is in radian if it is a pi if it is 180 it is electrical degree this is equation same m is also called the inertia constant. So, that means assuming g as a base the inertia constant in power unit is m p u is equal to m per unit actually it is m per unit is equal to h upon pi f that means that your that means m is equal to m is equal to g h upon say pi f if you divide both sides that g actually g is that your I have told you that 3 phase m v a rating that is the base of the machine. So, if you divide by g on both side that is m by g is equal to your h of pi f that means, this one we can put m per unit is equal to h by pi f. So, that is why that your a m is uh, your what to call that m is also called the inertia constant and, uh, and assuming g as a base I showed you uh, the inertia constant in power into m p with h upon pi f that is second square by electrical radian because this is mega joule second and mega joule is equal to actually your mega watt second. So, if you replace if you, if you replace this your what you call uh, the dimensionize if you replace like this that uh, just hold on dimensionize if you replace that mega joule second then electrical degree, uh, but mega joule is equal to mega watt second if you put is mega watt second it will be mega watt second square that will be your mega watt second square per electrical degree. Now, as this is the or, or original unit, but if both side when you 
divide by its machine base g in that case the unit of this thing coming second square per electrical radio radian or your what you call the we want this is per electrical radian and this will be if you want this one it will be second square per electrical degree i have written here second square per electrical degree because mega joule is equal to megawatt second so if you put here it will be megawatt second square per electrical degree and both side if you divide by g it will be a per unit and this side and ultimately megawatt per mv is a dimensionless so ultimately unit will be your second square either second square per electrical degree or if you want a radian it will be second square per electrical radian so that's why m per unit is h upon pi f and its unit is second square per electrical radian this way it can be defined so there should not be any confusion for particular the unit little bit you practice then absolutely there is no problem so therefore if we write in d degree then mpu is equal to h upon 180f second square or electrical degree this is equation 9 now we will come to your slowly and slowly we will come to this swing equation other thing so now figure 1 actually flow of power seen a scene this is a generator so consider a synchronous generator as shown in figure 1 right developing an electromagnetic torque t right and a corresponding electromagnetic power p this is p while operating at the synchronous speed omega s so before telling this what we will do we will assume windage friction and iron loss torque is all are all negligible all these things any 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 such thing is negligible we will not consider for our study this all will be neglected so if the now if the input torque provided by the prime mover i mean if the input torque provided this is your input torque provided by the prime mover at the generating shaft at is ti this is the input torque this is the input torque then under steady state condition that is without any disturbance that t must be equal to ti we are assuming all all losses everything is neglected so t will be equal to then ti so that is without any and it is a steady state condition now if you multiply both side of this equation by omega s the synchronous speed so that's why here i am writing also here you have neglected any retarding torque due to rotational losses so if you multiply both side this equation by omega s it will be t omega s is equal to ti omega s that means this equation actually you know that p your power is equal to torque into angular speed that you know so that means that ti omega s putting this first minus t omega s is equal to we can write it is power this is pi actually pi is equal to ti omega s and this is p is equal to t omega s is equal to pi minus p is equal to 0 this is 0 when system is at your steady state condition that is this is equation 12 so now if there is a departure from the steady state occurs for example a change in load or a fault this is at this is a perfect condition at steady state say and if there is a departure from steady state occurs for example a change in load or a fault the input power p i actually is not equal to your p that means that input power this p i is not equal to p i have taken here input power p i some some uh, article book they are considering this as a p m but i have taken it as the input power p i So, the input power p i is not equal to that electric your p. So, therefore, the left side of equation 12 is not 0. That means, this p i minus p actually it is not 0. So, and an acceleration torque comes to play. So, if p a is the accelerating, p a is the corresponding accelerating power, accelerating or decelerating, then this p i minus p e can be written as m into d square theta e d t square plus d into d theta e upon d theta e is equal to p a p a actually is equal to p i minus p that accelerating or decelerating power we will come to that later on so m we have seen m has been defined in equation 8 or equation 9 d is the damping coefficient 
and theta e is the electrical angular position of the rotor. First, we will write like this, this way. Although later we will assume that d is equal to 0 for this uh, uh, your study. So, it is more convenient to measure the angular rather than this one, more convenient to measure the angular position of the rotor with respect to a synchronously rotating uh, your uh, frame of reference or rotating reference frame, synchronously rotating reference frame. So, that is better, more convenient to measure for uh, even for stability studies we do so. So, that means, that means if it is if we if we your uh, uh, your measure the angular position with respect to synchronously rotating your reference frame, uh, that means your delta we define is equal to say theta e minus omega s into t right with respect to synchronously rotating uh, refer reference frame that is omega s into t. So, and if you take the double derivative of this equation 14, you will get d square delta d t square is equal to d square theta e d t square or other way you can write d square theta e d t square is equal to d square delta d t square. This is say equation 15 and where delta is the power angle of the synchronous machine, sometimes we call torque angle also right. Uh, so, neglecting damping your that is uh, d is equal to 0 and substituting equation 15 in equation 13, then what we will get in this equation you put d is equal to 0. So, and this d square theta e d t square you replace by d square delta d t square. That means, your this equation can be written as m d square delta d t square is equal to p i minus p e. So, using equation 16 and equation 6. So, if you equation 6 means that m is equal to in equation 6 m is equal to g h upon pi f m is equal to g h upon pi f that is in equation 6. So, put it here put it here d square delta by d t square is equal to p i minus p that is uh, it is megawatt. So, we are not we are taking the real unit of m not power not divided by g here. So, dividing if you divide this throughout by g the m v a rating of the machine uh, that means, what will happen the divide by g. So, if you divide by that um, actually m v a rating of the machine means it is its own base. So, you can write m p u is into d square delta d t square and if you divide by g the machine base megawatt will convert it to power unit. So, m per unit d square delta d t square is equal to p i minus p that is equation 18. So, where m per unit we have seen h by pi f we have seen it before. Therefore, h upon pi f this in, into d square delta d t square is equal to p i minus p wherever is possible I have written wherever megawatt or wherever per unit here it is per unit. So, this equation actually is called the swing equation. It describes the rotor dynamics for a synchronous machine. This is swing equation and your it describes the rotor dynamics of the synchronous machine. So, once it is done, then what we will do? Let us come to the uh, multi machine system. Look, multi machine system tangent stability we will not study in this class, that is basically for post graduate student and multi machine system tangent stability we cannot uh, uh, solve numerical in the classroom because one has to follow the iterative technique. So, why I have written multi machine system means uh, we want to just uh, find out the equivalent inertia constant that h h eq. So, that is why multi machine system, but we will not study the tangent stability analysis of multi machine system. So, in a multi machine system a common system base must be selected. So, for example, earlier we are doing g and h, but what we will do instead of g we will write g machine is equal to machine rating that is base value and g system is equal to system base. So, equation 20 then can be written as that means, this equation instead of instead of h I am putting h machine, but h and h machine it is same just is a multi machine system. So, we have to make it machine 1, machine 2 like this, but h machine and h both are same. So, this equation we can write uh, this 20 equation 20 we can write that is h machine into divided by pi f 
into d square delta by d t square is equal to p i minus p e. So, that is equ this equation. Now, if you multiply both side by say g machine that is the machine that is the machine dating that is the machine dating then g machine this equation this equation I have uh, written here for your understanding and uh, because this is in per unit this is in per unit, but if I multiply the g machine the machine dating base. So, g machine into h machine into d square delta d t square is equal to p i minus p into g machine at that time it is converted to megawatt that is why I have written here megawatt right. So, now that whole thing this whole equation now you divide by the system base suppose you have taken say g system a different base. So, divided by g system this whole equation you divide by g system that is system base this equation if you do so it will become g machine upon g system g machine upon g system into h machine d square delta d t square h machine uh, your here I have missed one thing that is uh, your what you call that pi f term I have missed right. So, uh, the, so this pi f what missing here so now I have written. So, into d square delta d t square is equal to that h machine upon pi f d square d t square is equal to p i minus p into g machine by g system. This is equation 21. So, everything is same, but we have a different base now. So, h system by pi f into then d square by delta square that means, this thing your what you call whatever 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 here you have in terms of that pi f is there but other thing g machine into h machine upon g system we will write that one is h system. So, we are writing something h system upon pi f into d square delta d t square is equal to p i minus p per unit on system base that means, p i minus p and g machine upon g system. So, we are writing it is per unit on system base this is per unit on system base because g machine upon g system. So, h system is equal to uh, g machine h machine upon g system. So, H system is equal to G machine H machine divided by G system that is system base that is 23. So, that means, this is machine inertia constant in system base. So, this is required actually when you try to find out that equivalent inertia of the uh, your machine for a multi machine system and for a multi machine system that when a group of generators they operate in parallel. Uh, they swing in unison that means, they are in coherent group that means, their increase or decrease of the speed will be same. So, that means, uh, they, are, they are will be in coherent uh, group sometimes we call coherency. So, that will uh, we will come we will come back to that thank you.